Young Blood. Okay. I don't yeah, listen man. to music. I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> oh wow. I listen to all. Just stepped up in this party, tipsy all right. off this book party. <laughs> but speaking of Beyonce, <laughs> do we want to segue? Let's go. That's what I was just I was just putting yep. my notes over here. Sure. All right, Swarm. Everybody over here. Everybody's finished this. Everybody. I'm assuming. Yeah. So Hold on. Here. Oh. All right. Uh, no, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> so I made this was an amazing show to me. Like it was yes. to me, it was very, very dumb. And you could tell so there's some different things in here. Donald Glover, you could definitely tell that he did this was his kind of thing. And the yeah. background, it comes from, I guess, a lemonade uh thing. Something happened during lemonade where some girl killed herself. Allegedly, was some urban legend or supposedly it happened where this girl killed herself because she found out Beyonce got cheated on and she felt she could never get a man. And that and um and that's when Donald Glover saw that and that's what made him come wow. up with the idea for this. Yes, I didn't hear that part, but wow, that's how he came up with the idea for this. It's some yeah. urban legend thing of some girl killed herself after listening to limit listening to Lemonade because because Beyonce got cheated on. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, so this yep. one, and then he just made it real dark and just went like extrapolated out on this crazy shit. Yeah. That was super dope to me, like super yeah. dope. I thought it was superb. Yes, you know the the people that hate or that are hating on Swarm get a life because <laughs> I just really believe that the way that the 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 scenes, the way it was written, everything it just embodied so much. And for y'all to be like, I just couldn't get into it. It was just too dark for me. Grow up. Well, I think people. One, I didn't see like a ton of advertisement for Swarm before. Like I somebody sent it to me and I was like, this kind of look fire. Um, it definitely was, but when I and when I saw the preview, it was exactly what I was expecting it to be. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't one of those things, like it was wilder than what I thought, but I definitely knew like, okay, she gonna this woman is gonna be like killing people, whoever is anti Nija, she gunning for. Her. Yeah. I got that much. Um, if I didn't know how much of a spree she was going to go on, um, you know, I thought it was going to be maybe like this one person as she snapped. But it was, I feel it like was a most people started talking about it because of Chloe sex Chloe, scene. yeah. And that's when, like, when it dropped, that's all people were talking about. And for some reason, people are out here thinking that they really had sex. And I'm just confusion i'm like do you not realize like this is a movie and that they literally do like movie magic and certain angles and perspectives so it looks from the camera view real but it's not i'm i'm just blown away that people are even like going this far but what's so crazy to me is again Y'all are coming for her as far as like, oh, that wasn't a good move. She shouldn't have did that. You know, she just needs to stick to singing. First of all, she has been acting since she was little. So the fact that y'all are trying to like pigeonhole Mm -hmm. her just as a singer when she was literally in like Fighting Temptations as a little girl acting. That's number one. Number two, I'm an actor. Like this is all make-believe. So you're telling me I should not do a sex scene because you have already over-sexualized me. And now because I'm embracing my sexuality and you have decided that that's too much for you, that this is a bad look as if she's doing like OnlyFans or porn. And then I was reading some article when they were talking about like somehow Halle Berry got brought up into it. I was very Girl. as to what the, what point they yo, were trying to Yo, the think to pieces got to stop black people. These We got to stop yep. these think pieces, yo. Stop, there's a whole stop, article yeah, that Donald Glover hates black women because he told Dominique Fish, but he didn't give her any direction on like her character. He's like, just kind of do what you think she would do. And they like, they, 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 it's a whole article. This girl saying like, it shows his uh, dislike for black women because he yep. wouldn't do a better way of portraying a black woman. I was like, it's a fucking thrill. She's a serial killer. I'm trying to figure out the depths of this woman supposed to be at. And she's a serial yeah. killer. In actuality. So I have read, um, what's the woman who also to like, neighbors. okay. So she said that she made a conscious decision to, I guess, 
desexualize yes. um, her character. I, I mean, and I'm kind of on the fence with that notion too, because it's like, while yes, the antagonist of the whole show, um, the villain of the show, the main character, you have, you know, quote unquote, desexualized her. You're still imposing a sex sexuality onto her. Like the fact that you are saying, okay, because she is a virgin or is like awkward when it comes to her sexuality does not mean she is like void of sexuality. As we see as the, you know, the whole show progresses. It's just a matter of being able to maybe be comfortable with yourself in your sexuality, whatever that is, or however you choose to identify. So that was one where she was like making this like point because she was saying that, you know, the main characters, they are always seen as sexual beings, but in the same breath, then you're showing another character getting bent over. You know what I mean? So it's like, which one is it? Like, but all y'all niggas don't need computers. I've, I've come up with this whole thing. Like we need to like regulate where people get keyboards. Yep. That's how no, I, like, I, I definitely, I definitely concur. But, but I think um, that is just that, like, even even when we think about, like, when we start breaking down the characters, there were yeah, certain questions. Point, like, where you want to go? Where are you want to take it to, Don? There are certain questions that I have. Okay. Because, and I think I said something to y'all about the scene where, like, okay, so she wakes up at the dude's house when she finally does get it in, and Shout she had. To, uh, the, uh, Macaulay Copeland's little brother. Yeah, that's what yeah, I thought that was. Um, mm -hmm. I was like, man, you look like him. Like, to see him. It's and it's so many random, like little hidden gems, like yeah. the, the yep. stripper girl being Paris uh Hilton. I mean Paris, not, Paris Jackson. Paris Jackson. Paris Jackson. Yeah. And then saying she uh, black, my daddy black or half or whatever the case may be. I didn't be. even realize that was her until that later when they said something. Yeah, yeah, that's Paris Jackson. Uh, um, and then you, Billie Eilish is in there. So it's so many little moments. Yeah, Billie yeah. Eilish is the girl at the little cult, like place. at the cult. Yeah, she was yeah. the one. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and so when we get to certain scenes, like so, w when she plugs the phone up and she's starting to get text messages, and then she gets home and realizes what happens. <laughs> Do we think that? She killed her sister. Like, no. do, do you think that? Because I, I don't think. Uh, uh, I don't think because so. Because remember when uh, Chloe's character, which I forget her name, was doing her makeup. Marissa. Marissa. Yes. And, and she, she started had, kissing her wrist. Yes. Because she had already performed some self harm yep. and was trying to commit right. suicide. So now, I, I this, never thought that she killed her. But now, knowing as we saw the series progress and knowing what we know, and then even Leon was like, you killed her. They, they wouldn't let her come to the funeral, whatever the case may be, because she had a history of being erratic. And then this entire time, Marissa is clearly she is hallucinating and delusional about these messages that she's getting. So what if she technically might have killed the sister and then this just starts, this starts it. This is I don't think that's mind. the case because one, I think if they truly believe that she, with her bare hands, actually killed Marissa, they would have had her locked up. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they were, I think they realized or knew that this girl was toxic in whatever way, had all these other mental issues. And so I just think they blamed her for her death. And by her being the last one with them, you know, and especially on that one episode when they do kind of like the true crime first 48 type of thing, you can see like the dynamic of their relationship growing up was always something that made the parents very uncomfortable. This girl was already like, you know, she was a foster kid that they brought into the home and she was just needed a lot of help. And so I think, and then they have like this very um, kind of like symbiotic relationship or codependent relationship where mm -hmm. it seemed like, you know, Marissa was trying to break away from, but had not. And then for her to just ultimately commit suicide, again, how you committed suicide because your boyfriend is 
you realize your boyfriend is cheating and now she's not answering the phone. So, my, so I'm that. going to kill myself. You know but what I mean? So they had a very codependent relationship. And so I think that, they just blamed her, but I don't think she killed her. But that also you could kind of say because Marissa was trying to get away and that was going to shift the dynamic, that could be what could have potentially happened. And she, she I just okay. think that if I think if she really would have killed her, something eventually would have cemented and said yes she did it but they didn't make it seem like they were just hinting it the entire time it seemed like she died I think they hinted towards more her killing herself than they did Dre killing Marissa yeah so I, and I, just have, and I never really thought of her as being like schizophrenic in a way where she was like making up like scenarios and conversations with people. Like she wasn't like Joe Goldberg, you know, in like season four. She wasn't doing that. You know, she was just reading very much into people's tweets and literally just like extra like saying, Oh, you said what about this the text messages? Now but the text running. messages, Marissa, Janelle, she was Marissa. schizophrenic, the text messages. She Marissa was, was not so she thought she that was texting herself. Self, I, her that's phone. what I thought she was doing. She was texting herself. Cause you remember she found her phone in the closet, and she—that's mm -hmm. when she started texting herself from Marissa's phone. So she's basically telling her what the self is like. It's two different personalities to a certain extent. Of like, hey, it's do this. Right. And then she I, it. Was that schizophrenic, or was that just kind of something she was doing to mourn, like to kind of cope, like to make it seem like, dang. I don't know. That, that I, other text message you would be telling them, go kill these motherfuckers. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel that like was, yeah. it was a, you know, it was a bit of both, but I feel like people, it is kind of like a coping mechanism. I've definitely seen where people have maybe passed away or they played it out in different shows. I can't think of what show it is right now, but like, well, I know that the football player Larry Fitzgerald, huh? the football Larry Fitzgerald, his mother passed from cancer and he won't cut off her phone. He keeps the cell phone on and he'll just call it to hear a voicemail. So he mm -hmm. pays That's the whole thing. People, number. yeah, and people do things like that. They hear, hear yeah. his mom. And like leaves her messages, like yeah, he, people, he the yeah, for a long time. yeah. That's what I took it as. I'm like, okay, she just found happened to find the phone. She hated the way that they ended things through, you know, in person, and you know, maybe she wanted that last thing through the phone. She wished it would have been "I love you too." Right. So I didn't take I didn't take that part as necessarily crazy. I thought that was coping, but you know, all the other things was definitely solidifying her. So one of my questions on here for y'all is how many murders y'all think she did? <laughs> okay. I mean, just on the show, I could count. I mean, just in general, like how many do we think she did? I mean, I think it's crazy how, I mean, which, which I'm not mad because she was going to kill that white, that white woman, but then she ended up meeting the other dude. But I was just like, so you, you just going to let her go? And then I was like, really Donald Glover? Hmm. What with uh Paris Jackson? No, no the lady no. at the gym. The lady at the gym. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But I think it shows her maniacal aspect of wanting to see, you know, uh the Beyonce characters that she it derailed her from all her other plans. Yeah, this new plan is going there. And it but it goes what you said, Don. Didn't the text message say to her, follow the dude yeah. in the, uh the jacket? Yes, so but that's what I'm saying. So she did it wasn't like she was able to pull out her phone and say that it was like she got a message that said that so she at some point she was not consistently texting herself she was hallucinating okay. hmm. that, that, that's what i'm saying because i'm like that, that was I think she's a double digit numbers to be for record i think she's in double digits. oh yeah i think it's at least 10 people yeah because <laughs> yeah. she ran over it was five of them women at the convent yep. <laughs> the little cult that right. she uh drove over with her car so, and we learned there the thing about the the milk. So the milk thing comes up I a think couple she of her times. Grandma. She killed her grandmama. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I so, mean, the murders are stacking up, man. She's getting to, to uh, Jeffrey Dahmer levels here now. I know? think. So, yeah, yeah, I think what I think, and 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 that's that's crazy. Made that comparison because yeah, it started off early for her. It seemed like it had been a while. Like a long while uh, mm -hmm. since she had killed someone, and then when she just happened to do it, I think it was. That yeah, she just feeling. had like a psychotic break. You she know, had like yeah. that feeling, and I think it like triggered something in her from that feeling from the first time. So she just kind of kept 
going and her excuse to kill and to keep going was to go after people who had who were against Naja. Cause how she killed Damson, and I know that had more to to do with her sister. Yeah. But how she killed him and then put that pie. That shit was crazy. It was, was a rap crazy. Crazy. porn. They like full porn going throughout. It this was. Country. I was like, but you notice how every time it seemed like she would get hungry or something like after she would kill or like around the time. I mean, it takes a lot of adrenaline and a lot of energy. <laughs> so I would be hungry too. She needed her energy, huh? She yeah. I mean, when, to, when you like, because it's not like she is shooting people. Like she, I mean, she was shooting to a couple of folks, but she was like physically like beating yeah. people <laughs> to death. That's yeah. like a lot. Shit. So yes. I'd be wondering for a snack. But since, speaking of food. <laughs> I don't think I'd be thinking about food uh, after death and seeing blood. But, but hey, who, the, who are me? <laughs> the, 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 the scene where she connects with the, the guy that clearly works some sort of like, I guess the sound or lights at the Jay the, uh, the white dude girl. The white the, dude. Uh, yeah, no, you're about the DJ dude, the dude, uh, DJ. Oh, yeah, yeah. it used to be fat dude. They used yeah. to be fat dude, used right? To be fat dude. That whole scene, that interaction with them with the snacks, when I tell y'all I got my life and it was life was given in that moment because it was so unexpected. And I just love like the comedic aspect behind that. And then him still like, I can't do this ever again. I have to be disciplined. And then her ass gonna lock him in that freezer with that cake. I feel so bad for him. I feel so bad for him because he I, was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it almost seemed like if she wasn't that crazy and if she wasn't in that situation, they might have could work out because they was both kind of weird and quirky. Mm -hmm. They had a vibe. I, I, I kind of liked them together. You know, they they had the moment with the snacks and things like you said. So uh, it'd have been kind of noble if they did a little Bonnie and Clyde thing, no ver v like, yeah. when get, yeah. like when they both go start killing people together, like yeah. like he, or he brought them along. Thinking, yeah, or outside of all the crazy, I think just their quirkiness and things like that, they seem like they work with each other, and it's just like dang, you have to put the man in the freezer. I but think she, she was on a mission, so I get it. Time, and once she di didn't need him anymore, yeah, it was a wrap. I'm glad yeah. she just didn't literally kill him. Like she might have killed his diet. Yeah. I'm glad too. Yeah, I'm glad but, she said that because he didn't deserve. Yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully somebody found him before it was too late. Well, yeah, I think they. I, I well, yeah, they because, had to know, eventually because they had to get that cake out at the yeah. end. Well, maybe they didn't go back for it because then you know she bites her. Which I was like, how did we get there? You was eating a chocolate ball. What well, is supposed to be the Tiffany Haddish thing, right? That's supposed well, to be. Well, yeah, it's the Tiffany Haddish thing. No, but it's not like that. Yeah, it's oh, but Tiffany had his toe. Tiffany had his toe. Oh, Tiffany. Oh, but it was was it Sinai Lathan? It was Sinai who was. It was they were saying it was some. That's why the dude at the end when she ran out, the guy that was sitting on the dock, he was like, "Hey, is that Sinai Lathan?" No, well, he <laughs> said it's that that girl from Love and Basketball. Basketball. Oh yeah, well yeah. yeah. So they didn't say names. They couldn't say names. They say, but yeah, they said they didn't Jesse say Williams. Name, but they hinted, and that's why I was like, "Oh wow!" Like they said Jesse Williams. They they they, they said Jesse Williams. That was the first dude she talked to. She walked in. He was like, yeah, I'm, my name is Jesse. I feel oh. Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> oh, see, I missed that. How did I miss that? But, I girl, about that part I too. just wanted to, I'm like, I wanted to see the bite. I was like, you was eating a chocolate ball. And then next thing you know, yeah. you're running out. Like, what happened when you was eating? Was you just, like, in your mind, just, like, kind of moving around and then eating? And then you got a face. Like <laughs> I think she was still hungry. And when she saw Nyjah up close, she just was looking so good and appetizing. She just was still like, I can't believe ready to take a bite, and she just couldn't believe it. And she like, I had to maybe let me taste and make sure this, this is real. As Listen. these cherry or as these strawberries that I'm eating right now, I don't know. It was so random. I don't know. I just think <laughs> the whole series was just like perfect. Even like up until the last episode when she finally gets to the concert. See, I think that's and all fake. I think that I didn't like that. Thing. I didn't like that part. See, I was I was in my because after the conversation, Nelly, that we had, I was wondering if she was hallucinating. That's all hallucination. That's what I thought. Yeah, it was. You, you, it was what you that said. Whole that whole thing. thing. It had to be. So what part? Because if you notice in that the episode seven, the one where it was the the uh, the top dog underdog woman uh, cop, 
Right. That's yeah. all the real story. If you notice the way it's set up, is even Donald Glover is like, Yeah, I'm making this movie about this girl. Right. So everything that's supposed to be like the real life story, and like that's supposed to be like the real thing. Everything else we see is a telling of that, that story. That seventh episode. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So she did oh. get arrested at the, the Naja show uh, and was going by what what was her name? She was going by Tony. Right. Yeah. So that all that's real. So everything that we see after that is an interpretation by the directors of what that event was. Because even when Niza showed up, her face, now. what? Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking a lot. Which because I, I said something to Barney offline about it. So now, okay, it makes sense. Well, I don't know. Okay, so in the last episode, like, so when she was getting when she left her tickets, which I'm like, how do how do you leave the tickets? Well, she didn't leave them because remember she set the girl on fire, and yeah. it was in her pocket, and the tickets were in you, her. You pocket. left the tickets in, in there. <laughs> <laughs> how do, I'm like, how did you leave the tickets in there before you he, set so the he, girl he, on fire? Apparently, like, if you murder somebody, you're gonna run their pockets <laughs> in general. <laughs> you 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 should have made sure you got it before you murdered her and before you burned set her on fire. And so I'm like, she went down there. So like the part where she was trying to get the tickets anyway, but she didn't have her ID. Like, wasn't that real? No, none of that stuff's real. Well, we don't know. This is their interpretation of what happened. Well, they see, don't know. I feel like right. that part was real, but the and part because, where he was inside was not real. That was a hallucination. Well, I all think of, the whole she, thing is all this stuff isn't real, except for episode seven. I mean, you mean episode six? No, no, no. Everything that we saw is just the episode the, six. The director, Donald Glover, that's talking about doing this movie interpretation of what he thinks happened from this news story. Right, so that was to be episode seven. So that's six. That's only thing that's back to seven. No, six, six is the one where we where we see like the actual people. Yeah, that's the, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. I'm that's sorry. What okay, that, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So like but, that was the only but real. But there one. are a series of events, like okay, like what you're saying. There was a series of events that actually happened IRL, yes. and so he is filling in the blanks between right. these series of right. events. Right. So that. You know, forty-eight hours episode. They're supposed to be like this is the real story right. behind what y'all are watching. But, but to me, I thought the concert was real. Now she gets arrested, but after she doesn't realize that she's arrested, because one, that particular scene was cut was from the on the run tour that Jay Z and Beyonce did in Atlanta. I was there when somebody ran up on stage. Wow. I, didn't know I remember that. So that's yeah, where that's I was confused. We I'm like, are they allude were they alluding to her being that person who ran up on the yes. stage? Yeah. Okay, yes. that's what I thought. And because that was a dude, and because at this point and she, she a, is, you know, presenting like as, you know, like a stud. Yeah. So <laughs> people are like, is it a dude or a girl? And you going by Tony. So all of that made sense. But then when she's seeing Nyjah, if you look again at it, the face of Nyjah is actually Marissa's face. Mm -hmm. It's not Nyjah's face. Because we never get to yeah. see Nyjah in the face, like the actual real Nyjah ever. It's they like, did. Honestly, they did show her. it comes fully through the light, it ends, it's, it's Chloe's face. Mm -hmm. So that's why at that point she's hallucinating. Yeah. Okay. Because hmm. so like, you know, think about that, the limbo, episode, that, that middle the episode before the last like, one is the fake, is the real reality episode of like what really happened. I want a whole series with the top dog undergirl black woman. I'm I, I said black. the same thing. I was like, yeah. that was so good. We could have did a couple of episodes with her. Like, did she I, finally right. crack the case? It's like quintessential Donald Glover. It is. Like, it really was. That was, you know, season one Atlanta when they yeah. had that, that transracial episode with like, yeah. like or season two, because I don't think he did that in season one. Season two is when he started that trope. Um, yeah. You know, in the last season when they did the goof troop, Yep. yep. When I tell you, I was like, wait a minute. Like, I'm Googling. It was so I'm like, I was Googling. Real? Like, it was so, it felt so real. Remember the yeah. remember the episode where they uh the commercials, you thought the commercials were real? Yep. Where, uh, yep. Yes. Where, uh, Paperboy was talking on that show, and you were like, I was like, Dutch Masters got a uh, Swisher Sweets got a commercial? And they, <laughs> so, they did the Arizona tea. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah his I love mind is, Yeah, his mind is definitely something that is one of a kind. And now I'm sitting here 
with the finale of Atlanta thinking, was this all a fucking dream? Well, no, 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 no. I, it was a dream. Fans? If we want to talk about it, no, the finale of Swarm. No, the finale. Well, they, well, you know, they of said Atlanta. Swarm is supposed to be in the same universe. Oh here, no, the fin- yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. wait so wait. the all the whole last episode of Swarm is a, all a dream. Yes. Which is which is literally if somebody told me this was like a part of Atlanta, like an episode or two of Atlanta, I would totally believe it because now, it yeah. it's the thing Atlanta, they, they're saying that Swarm is a part of the Atlanta universe, like it's it happening is within the Atlanta universe. Like no, it's, it's, Atlanta thing, universe. it's actually that stuff that happened around Atlanta was talking about. But then I'm gonna have to, gonna have to watch it again because it started in 2016. About, like, Atlanta started 2016. No, I'm a, I'm gonna have to I'll have to watch it again because no, I, I know what you're talking about in the last episode of Atlanta where it was like they was waking up mm-hmm. and it was like yeah, he was in that dream? like did he ever actually wake up? So it was like, is it like you know right. like Dallas where it was like all a dream, or was say elsewhere where at the end it was all that stuff was uh, then saying elsewhere was in the little boy's globe, the little uh, shake globe. And, right. it, and it basically pans out as this autistic kid that's playing with his uh, shake globe. So, so elsewhere is supposed to be, and there's supposed to be some crazy stuff where all these other shows are connected to say elsewhere. So basically, all these shows are inside this little boy's mind. It's a whole, a whole like conspiracy thing online about it. Two thousand pre two thousand three. So all conspiracy theories on board. Yeah, but that's <laughs> what I was asking, even about Atlanta. <laughs> You know, that's why I was like, was the series itself even real or were we just a part of Darius's? Like, was it created in his mind? I mean, it could have been because like that one episode where Van is in like Germany or France or whatever. Girl, and they, and they go in the hands. Like, what the fuck was that? Baby. And then her ex, it was a whole thing. Like, it, nothing, it made no sense. And then for her just to randomly run into like, it, I'm telling you. Because it's like at one at, at one point, you know, as particularly season three did this where, you know, it was more so just like storytelling. It wasn't like a continual story. It wasn't like these different, comp, you know, episodes were progressing the story. They did a little bit better of it in the last season where they would still kind of have like these kind of like one off episodes. But it was still advancing the overall storyline whereas season three felt like these was like a bunch of unconnected episodes i still loved it but they're all connected though but like you said if it was all doing this it's actually i looked it up it's called the westfall theory okay so it's called the westfall westfall theory it's a universe so basically this this thing there are 441 shows are connected together through saint elsewhere and I think that's what he's trying to do, where these all these random things have these other different things that are connected to other shows that he's doing our projects oh, wow. and music even. Wow. And I, I, I maybe I'm reading into it more, but if he is doing the Westfall theory, he on some other different some, some Negro shit. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna have to look that up. Yeah, I'm, I'm have intrigued because I need to know. Yeah, it's 441 know. shows that are connected. Yeah, when wow. you read through it, you're gonna be like, damn, so, that is connected to that. So they just haven't come out yet. We're just. It's only been like the Atlanta and Swarm as part of that whole. Well, yeah, he the you know he's building that right, and some of his music, okay, okay. And some of his music, mm. and that other movie. What's the movie he did with Rihanna? It's supposed to be like a part of his universe. Oh, too. oh. Guava Island. Oh, it, that one is a part of that too. Guava Island. Then, yeah, that's Guava what I said. Island. They said that Donald is trying to like basically mm. have these Easter eggs for all his things like connected. And I mean, that makes sense because then he had like the This Is America and that shows up in that film with him and Rihanna. And they basically yep. have that video within that movie. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The song was good, okay. man. Like, I had a good time with it. I had a good time yeah. with it. I, I, I I it again. Oh. You say what? I'm like, I can't watch about it I can't watch this weekend. Yeah. I can't watch it at night because I'll have bad dreams. But <laughs> yeah, I could definitely watch it again. Like it's something that I would watch with somebody. Like, hey, you gotta watch this, and I'll watch it with them just to like see their reaction to things with that. So yeah, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to watch that last episode again because I'm like, I didn't think that whole thing was a dream. Yeah. I'm still not 100 that it is. Yeah, it's crazy. So yeah. it's the thing is uh, that they're, it's it's their project. Like you got everything besides the the that sixth episode. V 
is their interpretation of what they think had happened. Right. No, and I like, got that like, part. Was I, right, that I got that. Home. But you all said this very so last. So seven episode. is what they think that she went through. Like, what did this person do on that last day before they ran up on stage and got caught? Right. Okay. So I see that now. And that's why I didn't get that at first. I was like, I thought they were alluding to her being the person that got caught. But seeing her be here at this concert, and then it's like, but this doesn't seem real. So yeah, that's what was confusing. What y'all think about them making her Tony, like making her into a, a stud? What y'all think about like that kind of shit? I think that tracks. Women do that all the time. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that tracks. I think for yeah. her to be this person who may have be, been, you know, like sexually confused for a long time. Um, we saw on the stage when she was stripping. First of all, I don't know what that those liturgical dances that she was doing. Like, well, I mean, <laughs> well, hey, it was it was a mess at first, but guess what? She ended up getting better. I was like, oh wow, she actually got better, and the girls actually respected her more. Well, and they that's the part, like, girl. You know, that's the part I wasn't ready for. I wasn't expecting her to like come up and be end up getting better at doing the stripper thing. I was like, wow, like because she but, was girl like and i think too for her because she didn't want to get fired because her connect the reason why she's even working at that club is to get close to that man who tweeted so it was like if i lose this connection right then i'm not gonna be able to go after him anymore right. so let me get right. better so i don't get fired exactly so he, when he show up again i could follow him yeah but no her being like you know I guess I'm not going to say she wasn't like super feminine in the beginning, but to her like transition to Tony, I wasn't surprised because she seemed like she was thirsty and she was looking for love. I've seen people do that. Like they be one thing, you know, trying to attract one thing. And then it's like, oh, that's a fail. So let me try to switch things up over here and maybe mm -hmm. I'll attract this all to like find love or be one to things like that. So I wasn't surprised. Plus, the girl just bad shit crazy. Anyway. Yeah, I think you know, and depending on what type of situations that you're in, and I know our mom will like mention, um, you know, especially dealing with certain kids who be in the system. You know, you were obviously um, probably living in some like group home at some point before they foster you. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, some women will do this, and I know that was a true. What was that girl's name who had gotten out of jail? She got locked up. Uh, something Brown. Um, oh, is this in, in Centoya? Centoya Brown. Yeah, and they had done an interview with her, and you know she was a cute girl, and I remember her saying, "Cute don't get you nowhere. Don't do nothing but bring you problems." And so when she was in jail she really started to present more masculinely as a way to like protect herself yeah. because before yeah. by her being like this cute girl now you get in traffic you know all these bad things happen to you solely based off of the fact that yeah, you are pretty. yeah. so then a lot of women start to put on this really hard armor yeah. as a means of protection Right. And right. I think after a while that starts to develop to develop in some other type of like, you know, it starts to manifest in their sexuality. Yeah. yeah. So not all the time, but sometimes. And I feel like, yeah. that's what happened with her, you know, right. So, yeah, it wasn't surprising that she uh, <laughs> made that transition, things like that. Yeah, I just especially think living on the street, you know, like how she was just kind of like bouncing around all over. I could definitely see her kind of like presenting that way because I think she's a beautiful girl. But and so I can imagine if you're like on the road, uh, you know, kind of like living how she was living, that you don't want to really attract want to attract any attention. So then right. you start looking, you know, like let me harden up so men aren't like preying on me. Yeah. Yeah. I know a couple of people like that, so definitely yeah. makes sense. Yeah. But now all, all of it made sense to me. No, it, I, I was interested. Like, okay, y'all y'all made some perfect sense for me. I, all these different details I did not even understand and know, and I, this, this is what we do this for. I did not know. This yeah. is not the seat pre uh, post 2003D. <laughs> <laughs> Learning and growing. <laughs> well, yeah. before y'all get out of here, I just have a quick question for y'all. 
Right. Oh, snap. Uh, I forgot we got the, the your, your question for your friend. Yeah, it's just super quick. Yep. Okay. Right. So let's say you met a guy and y'all were hitting it off or woman, whatever the case may be, whatever your mm -hmm. preference. And you find out like, you know, you have this feeling like things are really going well for you guys. And then all of a sudden you do a Google search mm -hmm. in this Google search. You find out that this person is a sex offender. Something happened when Whoa. they were 22 and the person was probably like 16 or 17 that they, you know, had this interaction with.